All right, guys, so we got the engine down up off the shelf. You guys seen it up there earlier. So this is the engine that I pulled out of this truck for you guys that are new. Um, it's a fresh rebuilt engine. It does have a little bit of whizzy stuff in it, but nothing super special in my opinion. It's valve springs, it has a camshaft. Uh, it has good valve springs. I can't remember if I, yeah, I think it has push rods in it too. I would imagine I put push rods in it. Um, it has marine connecting rods, which are not really super special per se, but a little bit better. Um, what else we got? It's a max 215 horse, max and balanced 215 horse from Seth at uh, Feral Diesel. Um, 5x18 injectors that I built. But the camshaft that's in it is a little bit too much camshaft to suit me. So we're going to pull that camshaft out and we're gonna put a stage two camshaft in um, from the guys that I deal with the camshafts. So I took the compounds off yesterday because we're not gonna use those compounds. We're gonna build a different set of compounds because apparently I'm like that. So um, what I'm gonna do right now, because we're gonna do cam swap, is we're gonna pull valve covers off, pull rockers off, pull push rods out. I wanna flip the engine upside down because I wanna change the um, tappets so we're going to put on an engine stand, um, pull the oil pan off, pull tappets, blah, blah, blah. Maybe just a quick inspection in there, make sure there isn't anything funky. Um, and also, I'm going to pull the injection pump off as well because this Max and Balance 215 horse, um, I want to just put, I'm going to bag it and put it on the shelf. And we're going to use a 180 horse pump that I have over there on the bench, which I'm actually in the midst of doing a couple other little videos on. Um, for some tuning stuff, but that'll be later on after this one So that's what I'm doing today. Um, and then I'll probably be doing some shorts videos, but that's you guys won't see that until later this week um, So let's get on with the show and Yeah, oh, I guess I did wash this all up yesterday um, It was dark. So I figured there's no point in trying to uh, Film it. So I just pressure wash it hose it down. You know, it's a little bit cleaner I was going to paint the inner fenders and stuff, but I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to rebody this truck. I, I was on the fence for a long time on what to do, so I am actively looking for a new body for this truck. Um, I want something that's like a 9 out of 10, so I'm pretty picky with a 9 out of 10 is a pretty nice truck. So um, I'm going to start looking for that so that probably in the spring or so, um, I'll probably start driving this and... We'll rip this, the body off of this and rebody this truck. So anyways, that's what we're doing. So I guess we're cam swapping today. So let's get after it. All right, for you guys that have never done this before, uh, talking cam swap, um, obviously you have to pull your front cover off, right? I've already had the front cover off this when we pulled it out because I, I swapped it from engine to engine. But <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about quick here is when you're pulling your rockers off, doesn't matter really, you don't have to keep them in order because you're gonna have to reset your valve set anyway. I know lots of guys will keep them in order so that they can just put them back on and not have to reset the valves, which I don't think is really the best way anyway, but here nor there. Um, but what did I want to say? Oh yes, um, what I wanted to just quickly mention, this is the way that I pull all these off, is I always pull, I'll undo the little bolt first and then undo your bolt or stud, in this case stud, after, because you'll kind of bung up these bolts a little bit. Um, because this is going to want to do this, especially with heavier valve springs. This has heavier valve springs in it. So we're going to pull all those off. I'll put it back in a time-lapse, pull those off, 
and then I'll come back to you guys and show you how to do it with a dowel. I don't even know if I still have my dowels or not. I think I lent them to somebody and they didn't bring them back. But anyways, um, I'll show you the dowel method um, or the theory in the dowel method. I'm not using the dowel method because obviously the engine is out. It's easy for me to put on the stand, stand right there. Um, so we can flip it upside down, pull the oil pan off, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I'm gonna pull the rockers off and then I'll come back to you guys um, and show you how to do the um, dowel method. And then we'll go from there. All right, I did find my dowels. Somebody did actually borrow them because the person that borrowed them, I messaged them and was like, hey, you saw my dowels? And they told me where they were. They were here, I just didn't know where they were. Anyways, um, you can see that we have used them a few times. Um, it's just half inch wooden dowel. Um, you don't want hard wood myself, but if you see, see how there's a little slit in the end of them here? So I just took a hacksaw and put a little slit in them and it doesn't have to go that far down. You can see maybe half an inch down or something. And basically all you want to do is that's the dowel, right? And it goes down inside there and you just push it down and you can feel it go down and you want to make sure you get a good grip on it so that it doesn't fall out. But basically you do that and then you're going to just put all 12 of them in there. And then I usually zip tie them together. Just put a little load on them so they don't fall. But just so you understand for you guys that have never seen it, that's what the inside of the, the tap it looks like, right? And then this just fits inside there and it's just a little bit of a pressure fit, but that's the reason for the notch because if you don't put that notch in there, you can't get the dowel to go in. You can, but it's, you gotta really work at it. So that's, you always gotta do is put all those in there. Um, and then the camshaft will come out. Something I will recommend is you wanna find something. I wanna say it's, abc plastic pipe it's like it's the white stuff that you would use for well, i have some up on the wall but anyways it doesn't matter you can buy it at home depot you can buy like a 30 inch or 36 inch chunk it just needs to be a little bit smaller than the diameter of the camshaft so like let's say this is the diameter of the camshaft you just want it so that it'll slide in there and the reason that I, you want to have that or something i've used all kinds of stuff but if you're going to do it just you know buy the right thing um is you're gonna pull the camshaft out and it's gonna take you some time, screw around. You're supposed to change the tappets. I know lots of guys don't, you can do as you will. I personally like to change the tappets, but if you're not, that's fine. Um, but pull the camshaft out. If you're not taking the oil pan off, what I recommend doing is sliding that tube inside there so that the tappets can't fall into the oil pan. Now, if you wanna change the tappets, not take the engine out, there is ways to do that and maybe I'll get into it one day. Um, I'm not gonna do it on this one just because I don't have time to, to do it. Uh, but maybe I'll do a cam swap. Actually, you know what? We're gonna be doing cam swap in something as soon as I get the dyno, which is not yet. But when I get the dyno, we're gonna be doing some cam swaps. I'll show it in that because I'll just be swapping it back and forth and I'll show you guys how to do it that way. So just stay tuned for that. It'll be in the next couple years anyways. Um, so let's get, um, I think now, I'm to the point, I'm to the point where I'm gonna put it on the engine stand. So I'm gonna put it on the engine stand and then I'll bring you guys back when I get it on the engine stand because you guys see me do that before so you don't need to watch me do that. All right, so we got this baby on the engine stand now. Um, what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna roll it over, pull the old pan off. Um, well, when we roll it over, I could take the camshaft out, but I'll roll it over. I'm going to take the camshaft out, or the oil pan off, pull the camshaft out. We're going to change the tappets. Um, we're going to have to swap gears on the oil pan, or swap gears on the um, camshaft. We're not going to use this gear. We'll use a different gear, but I'll show you swapping that because I don't know if I've ever showed that. I might actually do that in a separate video as well as this video. Anyways, um, so we'll do that and we'll get that slammed back in, the oil pan back on, get the rockers on, set the rockers, 
or set the valve lash, which I've showed before, but I'll probably show again, um, just because some guys don't watch all the videos. So let's get after it. All right, guys. So I got these two bolts out. I showed you the picture there a second ago. Um, I like to bring it up to top dead center, which is just getting your timing marks. I don't know if you'll be able to see the time mark on the crankshaft on this one is actually really not very easy to see, but bring it top dead center because then when you go slide your new um, camshaft back in, you don't have to monkey with that. So we are going to pull this out and get the lifters out and all that jazz, and then uh, we'll swap gears on the new camshaft. So this isn't hard guys, all you gotta do is go down in there in a magnet and you can pull the lifters out if you want, or the tappets out if you want to. Keep them in order you can. Um, I'm gonna have these reground because they do, that camshaft that was in this is a steel camshaft. And there's no, you can see there's like a shiny on it and that's, these aren't steel tappets, they really should have been. Um, but. I didn't have steel taps and couldn't get them at the time, so I just used these. And this thing doesn't have that many kilometers on it, so I'm not wasn't overly. This was never, per se, I never planned on leaving this engine together for a really long time. So, come on. Oh, yeah. Well, that one I was saying, you have to top it. It's easier to leave it at the top dead center. Apparently, I don't know what I'm talking about because you can't get the tap so so I'm just gonna roll it over here a bit oh it's a compression just move it so that you can get the tap it's out and then we'll just bring it back again after we put the new tap it's in there will be um, spring of this year I know that I have talked about this before spring of this year we're going to have um, a bunch of courses coming up for you guys that are interested in the engine rebuilding courses and some and some other stuff just shorter courses and stuff for you guys that are interested um, and i'll keep you uh i'll keep you apprised of what's going on when it gets that to that point but i just haven't got to the point where everything's ready and I wasn't happy with the first rendition of it, so we're not using that one, so. There, tappets are in. Now, usually, if this was a fresh engine, I would have coated those really heavy um, with uh, engine assembly lube. But being this engine is already covered in oil inside, the barrel part of the tappet This part of the tappet 
Um, and these do have a little bit of oil on them anyway, but um, I'm not covering it in oil because the engine is already covered in oil. Don't get me wrong, it's not going to hurt anything if you do, I just, I don't do it. Um, I will be putting a little bit of something on this face, probably just assembly lube, and then I'll obviously assembly lube the camshaft up, but uh, let's get over to, I got to find a gear, we'll get the gear pressed on, and I'll, oh actually, I'll pull the gear off of that camshaft that I got on the, on the shelf there. We'll pull that off, get the key out of it, put it in the new one, press it all together, and you guys can watch me do that, so then you uh, know how to do that. Something else I wanted to mention too, you want to make sure that this cam bearing is good. My cam bearing, there again, it doesn't have any that many kilometers on it, but you want to make sure this cam bearing isn't screwed up, and then also take a flashlight and just look into the bores of the rest of these, um, and if they're screwed up, I honestly wouldn't go any farther. If you have, you know, if the camshaft itself is screwed up, like on these, on your, your cam bores, like on these, I personally wouldn't go any farther because it will self-destruct. So, not very often. I've only ever seen a handful of them in all of the ones that I've ever had apart. So I wouldn't be too worried about it, but you want to check, make sure. So let's uh, swap this gear around and uh, yeah, get on the show. All right, now that we've got the gear on, I got the bolts cleaned up. We're just gonna give, uh, we gotta just quickly clean the camshaft off just because it'll have a little bit of uh, crap from the cardboard on it. So we're gonna clean that up and then we'll lube it up and put it in. Just tighten these two bolts up. I just had to go wash my hands. It's easier than trying to wipe them off. You want to tighten those. I do 28 foot pounds. You do you. And then obviously you want to make sure you get that line mark or the mark on the cam gear line back up again. You see me lube everything up. This is just uh, the regular engine assembly lube that we use, the Clevite bearing guard, which I find superior to most stuff. Um, I guess now what we need to do is clean this rail off, which is actually too bad, but we got to clean this rail off. Um, I'm going to use my carbide scraper. I will put a link in the description for the carbide scraper because lots of guys always ask So there'll be a link in the description for that if you are interested So I'm gonna grab carry bar I'm gonna grab the scraper scrape it um, Hit it with a little bit of scotch brite just to put an etch in it Do the same thing to the oil pan the oil pan is in the parts washer got to turn that back on for a few minutes and We'll get that pin back on there and then we can put the front cover on Oh, I actually need to change the injection pump. So we'll change the injection pump, and then we'll put the front cover back on and uh, put the rockers, push rods, all that jazz back in. So. All right, guys, let's do a valve set or valve lash. So this is a 12 valve Cummins for you guys that don't know. I imagine most of you guys probably ever know that if you're watching this video. And the valve lash for this engine, not engines are all the same, so you check out your manufacturer spec, is 10 intake, 20 exhaust. Uh, lots of guys will vary that a little bit. Depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I'll vary it. Uh, I did just put a bigger camshaft in this engine, so I don't need to. I'm going to do it as 10 and 20 because I'm going to have to run it a little bit and then check it, and then I might modify it a little bit. 
Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, I, like I said, I had just put camshaft, so the valve lash is way out to lunch in this right now. It's probably more than double, I would say. Yeah. So that was set at 10 with the other camshaft and it is now more than 30. So, super easy to do this. All you gotta do is crack your nuts loose. <clears throat> and you do wanna make sure that you tighten these nuts up really well after you get done doing this process. Because if you don't, they'll come loose on you. And I've had that happen to myself once and seen it happen to other people multiple times. So, pretty easy to do. Your Feeler gauge. Now you're gonna tighten it down now. To get the feel of this, it's kinda of hard, but I try to explain it kinda of like there's a little bit of, uh, it's like the metal is almost grabbing, but it's not grabbing, because there is oil in between it, but there's almost a little bit of friction there, is basically how I explain how I like to have it. Now everybody's a little bit different, so there again, you're just gonna to have to listen to you know somebody's showing you just listen to how they do it now that's maybe just a touch loose so we're going to tighten that up because you want it to be proper you know don't go into it and half-ass the job it seems like everybody likes to do that nowadays there we are and if you hold the, the screwdriver with the tension on it and then tighten the actual jam nut then you will get usually a decent valve set that's right where I want it so now on this one uh, I'm going to now all inline six engines that have the same firing order as these is gonna have the same valve lash so a 12 valve Cummins 24 valve Cummins a lot of the big um, anything with a rocker arm assembly like this you get into different engines are they're different because of the way that they're adjusted but anything that has a rocker on like this so anything B series C series Cummins uh, is all going to be the same. So what you're going to do is you got top dead center compression stroke number one. You're going to do intake exhaust, and then so I still have to do the exhaust obviously, and then you're going to go intake exhaust, intake exhaust. So I'll get those done, and then what we'll have to do is rotate the engine over 360 degrees, and then we're just going to work the opposite direction. So we'll be doing uh, number six intake and exhaust. And then you're going to do the opposite ones that you haven't done yet. So you're going to do intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. Pretty simple. Let's get through that and then we'll, yeah, let's go through it and get that done.
Okay, so now we got those ones done. And you can see that I marked them with blue marker. And I don't, I always do that so that I know which ones I've done, which ones I haven't done. So now we're gonna roll it over 360 degrees. Now we're rolling over 360 degrees. What we're gonna have to do now is we start at number six, which number six is now on compression stroke. So then we're gonna do six intake exhaust, intake exhaust, intake exhaust. <clears throat> now, if you want at that point, you can roll it over again, verify that everything is good. What I'll do is this engine is going back into my truck. I'm gonna run it for, uh, well, the cam break in 25 to 25, 30 minutes. And I'll put, probably two heat cycles on it. And then I'm gonna come in here and reset the valve lash. And I'm gonna reset the valve lash uh, at eight and 18. Now, this is one of those things, it's just completely up to you if that's what you wanna do. Manufacturer spec is 10 and 20. So it just depends on what you want to do. I usually recommend for the average person just to do 10 and 20 and not 8 and 18. But on one of these engines, um, unless you have a piston to valve problem, it will never hit anything. But that being said, it just depends on what your setup is, how the clearances are. So just take that as you may
All right, so that wraps it up. Hopefully that helps the guy out. Uh, check out my other videos. I got lots of other videos. This is just setting valve lash on a B-series Cummins. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments. And remember, it's not rocket science.